My dear students, Dr. Shwakor here, and as you are well aware, I have authored books for NEET PG, NEET DM, NEET MCH, as well as some of the books for USMLE examinations, MRCP examinations, and my lectures would be intended to get you right on the top there for your next examinations, DM examinations, MCH examinations, MRCS, MRCP, USMLE examinations. I hope my videos will benefit a lot. I will be presenting my things in a very easy, simple and palatable form for you. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot. My dear students, today I will be taking up a very important topic from pulmonary medicine or respiratory medicine and we would be covering the microbiological, the clinical and the pharmacological aspects of this topic. My today's focus will be Pneumocystis carton or pneumocystic gerochi. So, as far as pneumocystis is concerned, I have been seeing a lot many questions being asked about pneumocystis. So, first of all, you have to remember that pneumocystis carton is basically a fungus like organism, a yeast like fungus. And you have to remember that. This fungus usually remains dormant, but in certain conditions it can get activated. And what are the important associations or conditions in which pneumocystis can get activated? We are very well aware about this immunocompromised state, HIV positivity. There's a great association of pneumocystis carni infections with. HIV positivity. Not only HIV positivity, other immunodeficiencies like the primary immunodeficiencies. In action, you have to remember that the pneumocystis infection is common in case of patients who are on organ transplants because we give those immunosuppressants and the immunosuppressant drugs form a very important part of management. So, pneumocystis once again becomes a common pathogen. The third would be patients on chemotherapy, patients with malignancies, especially the malignancies of the hematological system. So these group of patients are more predisposed to the development of pneumocystis infection. Now, because it's an opportunistic pathogen, it will allow and thrive under immunocompromised conditions. After that, we are asked about as a clinical case that a patient who is on immunosuppressants presents in a medical clinic with features such as fever, non-productive cough, tachycardia, tachypenia and chest radiograph showing say bilateral infiltrates. The most likely condition would be so now we come to the symptomatology. The most important symptoms would be dyspnea, fever, easy fatigability, but you have to remember cough, and the cough would be typically non-productive. Examination would reveal tachycardia, tachypnea, and in late cases, cyanosis. The chest radiograph would reveal bilateral diffuse infiltrates especially hyalur infiltrates, very hyalur infiltrates, but sometimes we can have normal chest radiograph as well. So both normal as well as bilateral diffuse infiltrates. ABGs would typically show hypoxia and increased alveolar arterial gradient would be there in addition to respiratory acidosis. Now, how do we come to the confirmation of this infection is by virtue of bronch bronchoalveolar lavage and bronchoalveolar lavage in association with brush biopsy or bronchoscopy would reveal the organisms by virtue of staining and what are the characteristic stains which are positive for pneumocystis. You have to remember them, it is very frequently asked. You have to remember methanamine stain the gypsum stain and the right stain, they are 
very special for leukocystis. And you can also use monoclonal antibodies to identify this organism. This leukocystis becomes more severe in case CD4 counts fall below 200 per microliter. That's very really important. Now, coming back to the scenario I present to you, present to you in the middle of my conversation. So, this patient presented with dyspnea, fever, non-productive cough, tachypnea, and chest radiograph showing bilateral diffuse infiltrates in a immunocompromised patients will be more towards pneumocystis cardi infection. Now, how do we treat this infection? Though big being a fungus or yeast like fungus, you will be amazed to see that the response to some of the antimicrobials is excellent. And what are they? A very simple and a common drug, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, is highly effective in case of pneumocystis infection. Then we have this antileprotic drug, Dapsun. Dapsun has multiple uses and this is one of the important conditions in which it gives a good response. Primaquine, basically an anti-malaria. And primaquine will also find use in pneumocystis infection. Clindamycin has been also found to be very effective. Pentamidine, in certain cases we use pentamidine combinations and pentamidine is highly effective for pneumocystis infection. In addition to that, we have atavacuin, atavacuin, and that atavacuin is also used in some cases of pneumocystis cardiac infection. So you have to remember all these features. In addition, at the end, I would just like to tell you something about the pathology that this pneumocystis typically affects type 5 pneumocytes, but on the other hand, causes hypertrophy of type 2 pneumocytes and the type of pneumonia it produces basically is the interstitial pneumonites. I discussed just these pulmonary manifestations of pneumocysts, but it can also affect the skin, spleen in addition. So today's focus was more about the pulmonological aspects of pneumocystis cardiac infection and I hope you just have and keep these points in your mind and be well prepared for your exams with the stock. Thanks a lot.